Hey everyone, this is Gleb, and let's do something fun and useful today. I have this to do MVC application. It's part of my Cypress Basics workshop. You know, you can add to do's, let's say, right, test, and you can delete to do's. You can mark the to do's completed. The problem is, what happens when you reload the page? If I reload the page, the completed status is gone. Right, so anything I complete, if I don't delete it right away, no, it actually ignores that status. We can look at the network communication, and let me bump it up a little bit. If I add a new item, and say hello, I can see the post request, create an item. If I reload, I can see it's getting the item. If I delete an item, it sends a delete message call. Now, the problem is if I click on the item to complete it or toggle, it doesn't send anything to the server. And this is why it doesn't save anything, because it's not making those calls. So in this video, I want to show a test-driven development, how I use Cypress to implement features while running the tests. At this point, I have my VS Code open right here, and I have Cypress open, and I have the spec running. And right now it doesn't do anything because you don't see any tests, right? Now, before I start implementing the tests, I want to show the structure of my application. Let me zoom in a little bit. My application has a page or DOM user interface. That's where I enter new to-dos, click buttons, and so on. It shows the data that it gets from a data store, a central data store in my application. I use Vuex, doesn't really matter, but the data between the page and the store are always synced. The data in the store, on the other hand, is synced with the backend by using REST API calls, right? And the actual backend is storing the to-dos. So I'm going to attack the problem of missing toggle for complete status from two directions. First, I will write tests that will hit the REST calls directly, right? I'm going to write an API test using Cypress to just figure out, does my backend even support changing an item and toggling the complete status? If that works, then I will write a test to operate through the user interface, and then I will check inside my Vuex data store that those changes are propagated. And finally, I will implement the sync between the Vuex store and the REST API calls. And at that point, I'll have a whole feature working and every layer tested from Cypress. So let's start by making sure that the backend supports toggling the completed property on each item. Here's how I will do this. I will create a new test and before each test, I want to reset all items just to make sure that we start with a clean slate. I have a special endpoint in my application where I can just say, okay, just overwrite everything with an empty list. Let me move this to the side. Notice the test is sending the reset call. Excellent. Uh, I can get the items after that. Right. To do and its body should give equal an empty list. So after reset the to do's, they're gone. So this is an API test of itself, right? We're using just API calls to interact with the backend. Now I will add a to-do, okay? It's incomplete, and I will get from its body the ID property, and then I'll have the ID. Since I don't know what the ID is, I probably should print it to the command log using scilog command. Okay, so we added ID, a, a new to-do with ID of one. Okay, so now we wanna Make sure that we can toggle the completed status, okay? And before we do that, let's com confirm that initially the completed is false, right? Here's what I will do. Before I get the ID, I'll just look at the body, okay? And I'll use an assertion, deep include, and, you know, the title is first, completed is false, and after I confirm some properties, then I will just get the ID, okay? Oh, initially, the to-do has completed false. 
Now, in order for me to change the property, I'll execute a patch request, which is a standard HTML method. And I'm using the ID that I got when I posted a new ID, and I'm toggling, right? I'm only sending the properties that I want to change. And the backend, if it implements REST semantics, will merge the new properties with existing properties. Okay, well, seems like it, it succeeded. Let's verify it. We can say its status should equal 200. Perfect. And if we get the item again, right, how did we get it first time? Well, we posted it, so we'll have to do request get to do slash ID. It's body, right? Now we can actually confirm the entire thing. Deep, uh, deep equals. We know the ID, right? The title is first and complete should be true. Perfect. So this tells me that the backend actually supports changing the completed property, right? The only thing missing is the page or application UI logic. So let's work on that. And let's start a new test. And here's what we can do. It toggles an item. And let's do the following. We're going to reset the data before each test so that every test starts with a blank slate. We can even post the ID, I mean, the new to do using an API call. And then we can visit the page and we can get the to do list li elements. And there should be one item. So we know the application has loaded. So this is kind of fun, right? We're using a combination of API calls and the uh, UI tests. Okay, so we have this item. We have a single item loaded, and we can say uh, find toggle, and then you know, should not be checked, I believe. Does it find the right toggle? Yeah, it does. And maybe we'll say click on it. Okay, and we see the UI changes, right? It actually changes something on the item itself. We can confirm that the clicked work. We can say contains, let's say to do this ally first text and should have class completed. That's what gives it a strike through. And we can say before that, when we take the first item, it should not have class completed. It's actually a good practice, right? We confirm the property before and after the action. All right, so how do we confirm that our click has registered? Well, here's the thing that we can do, right? If we updated the UI, then we can say Sci window, right? It's, let's, I wanna say app, right? I think, let's look at the code, app, yes. Our application at the end has this little thing where it says, okay, take the app, right, which is a big object that has all the logic, implements the actual app, and just put it on the window object as a property. And we can do it conditionally. In my case, you know, we just say app. And so now in our test, we can say, okay, okay, give me the app object. And this is a way for the test to access the data in your application. And notice right here, it has all the methods and it has to-dos, right? And it has, I think it has the store. Okay, I think it's the store. It has the state, right? And it has the to do And this is the array we wanna check, right? So here's what we will do. From our test, we got the app and we can say app store property state to do. So we're drilling down in a single thing and it should have length, uh, should have length one, for example. And we can take the first item, right? That would be the first item in the array. And, you know, Vux wraps it with observables, but these have the properties. And what we want to do is say, okay, it's in the first item, should have property completed, true. Perfect. We confirm that when we click, the view store does change the value. Perfect. Now, what else does it have to do? Before we click, why don't we do the following? 
we're gonna intercept patch call right because we know that ultimately that's what application has to do right it has to send the HTTP call uh, with a patch method to the to do's endpoint and it doesn't do it so now we can actually modify the application okay before we do that let's look at the markup I believe we'll have to change that a little bit where are all individual items okay so right now we are looking at completed to set the class and we have a toggle right that's the toggle that we are clicking right here and right now it just uses v model right and we cannot use v model we can just say okay uh the attribute checked depends on to do completed and when you change your value when you click on that right that's where we have to like i don't know update completed i guess and pass the item okay so when we change your value it actually calls this method and right now we will fail i believe because we don't have that update completed function right but we can look how we implemented removing to this okay so let's come here and say remove to do's and so okay, these are the methods that our ui calls so if we want to implement uh say how did i call it update completed we can do the same right we can say maybe toggle to do okay so i saved it we run the test okay now right now it does nothing because we didn't implement right the actual toggle to do action now we have to go to our store which is somewhere right here i believe no mutations this i think right here okay so uh we kind of do the fall the same thing okay we'll say toggle to do's and we can you know inform the log right file and right here we're using access so we can say patch right and what do we have to patch we'll say completed is not to do completed right uh, exactly like we did in our rest api call so we're doing the same from application code and we can say toggle to do's okay and right here we have to update the state of the view store and we'll say toggle and right now this will fail because we did not implement this okay but we can see the call happening right the call went to the back end and all we have to do we have to implement this action which is somewhere right here and you know we can look how remove to do this is done so we can do the same thing state to do okay so what do we have to do we have to look at all existing to do's right and we'll say found and we'll take to do's and we'll find the to do where eh, maybe call it t so the names don't clash and right so if found then we'll say completed is flipped and i believe this is it let's see uh, to do's right state they come from the state object that vux gives us as a which call back and look at that right so every time i click notice it does the patching and it updates the status so it actually operates correctly the only thing missing notice that we are observing this call right we want to confirm that the call has happened and right here we set up uh, an intercept before we clicked on this and what we want to do we want to say okay wait for that call to to be made right and we'll just confirm that it happens and right now it doesn't happen because we never hit it because our url to watch doesn't include the id so i believe this is all it's necessary and notice when we clicked right it actually sent the patch request right and the patch actually hit our interest so we know that we're watching the right request and so the only other thing that we want to do right here is to confirm what application is sending to the backend so we can say it's request body right should deep equal 
and it just has to send completed true, right? And you know, let's go crazy, right? Let's say, okay, click it again. Right? We can say right here contains first find toggle and click it. Okay, so notice we clicked, we cleared the completed status, we can wait for the patch network call again, and now it should be false, and our UI right, also should have been updated, should not have class completed. All right, and so we can run those two tests together, and we're verifying that we can hit the API and it works, and we're verifying through the use of UI by looking at the state inside that it all it gets updated correctly and then the application is making the expected calls to the backend. So this is how you use Cypress to implement the feature while observing all layers of your application code and your server 